guys, welcome to my Etsy channel. This is Nancy from nancybadijo.com and welcome to another episode of Etsy Shop Critique. Today I will be doing a critique on the store called Beauty Typography. Um, the owner is Donna. So thank you Donna for allowing me to do a review of your shop. So guys, any resources that I currently use on this video or anything that I mentioned um, that she could actually use to improve her shop, all the links are below this video. You'll find a box where you could click on and find all the links to click on and actually use those services or products. Um, and what I'll be using today is E-Rank, also known as Etsy Rank, to do her audit of her actual listing. So let's go ahead and get started. So today I'm going to be doing a audit on this particular listing right here. And normally what I do is the first thing I talk about on, on a critique is the actual photo. So on this photo, um, what I found that by looking at all the photos is that, in my opinion, um, I would just get a different type of mock mock up. You did a really good job of using as many photos and different styles of photos, which is really good because you're showcasing the product in different frames. And, and that's always a great thing because then the customer can see it on a black frame versus a gold frame versus a brown frame. So that's really, really good. However, when you buy online um, as an e-commerce platform, first impressions are everything. So your photo has to be um, exceptional. It can't just look nice or okay. It has to look exceptional. Obviously, you want to showcase your product exactly how it is because, you you know, it's just the ethical thing to do. However, your photo should be exceptional. Looking at this photo, um, I don't get that. It looks a little bit um, plain, I guess. So what I would try to do is if you have a different mock-ups, I would try to change them up. Um, from all of the ones that you currently have, I think this one actually makes the picture pop a little bit more. Um, and it does make it look a little bit better in my opinion. Um, that would be my suggestion because what you have to think about is first impressions, everything. The person cannot touch, feel, or look at your item physically. All they have to go by is the photo. So if the photo is not compelling or grabbing enough. What they're going to do is when they're searching for stuff in the search results, they're going to keep going and they're not going to buy your product or click to learn more about your product. So my first recommendation would be to add a photo that has a little bit more of a pop. Maybe um, you have the picture um, on just a black frame like the one that you have right here um, as the main one. Um, also make sure that every photo is sized the, si the same size. Like this photo and this photo size differently. And also this photo um, on the left hand side, um, the photo or the image is a little distorted. It's like white over here and then it's darker on the other side. I don't know if that's just my screen or if it's just the photo, right? So I apologize if it is my screen, but I highly suggest changing that up and making sure that your photos are all sized correctly that they all have the same background, colors, and that you have a compelling photo, that your photo looks amazing. We don't want it to just look okay or or for it to look nice. We want it to take it to the next level. So the person that is your target audience, whoever's buying your product, when they see it, they want to buy it. And then even if, you're, if you show your product to someone else that's not your target audience necessarily, but they found your item or stumble across your listing that they are also wanting to buy your product because it's so amazing it looks so beautiful that they want it as well so you want to make sure that you're targeting both types of customers um, the second thing I want to talk about is your SEO so SEO guys also known as search engine optimization and that's just basically how the search engines like XC Pinterest or any large engine like Google or Bing, that's how they communicate and that's how they understand what your page is all about. So they all know that this page is about a print that's called Enjoy Today. 
and that's how they know. And basically, there's SEO factors that you have to do, um, which are on on page SEO factors and off page SEO factors. So on page SEO factors is having your keyword in your title, having the keyword in the listing description, having the additional keywords throughout your listing description, making sure that you're using all 13 tags. Um, is the history of the listing, how old it is, how many people interact with this listing, do you get a lot of favors from this listing? All those are components of making um, your or ranking higher in the search results for Exe or any search engine as well. Um, now, keep in mind that I'm using Exe Rank. Also, now um, they're changing the name to E Rank. And Exe Rank, what I did was I did an audit on this listing. And this is what I'm coming up with. Um, the actual keywords that you're using um, are too oversaturated. And what that means is that you're using keywords that everyone else is using. So therefore, you have a lot of competition and it's going to be very hard for you to rank organically for these keywords. Now, you could do uh, Exceed um, promoted listing campaign, um, but your cost per bid will be a lot higher because you are competing with many other people using those keywords. So for instance, if we do inspirational art and we were to go to exe.com and put in that keyword, you're going to notice that there are other people using it. And it's a large percentage. There's 264,000 people using the word inspirational art. So therefore, you could literally say you're competing with 264,000 people. That's going to be very hard for you to rank organically for. Um, and if you do, you're going to be stuck somewhere on the bottom. You're going to be buried all the way in the bottom because there's so many other people using that particular keyword. So therefore, my, re my recommendation is to go back and do your SEO again. Um, what I would do is make sure that you are targeting your customer. If you don't know who your target customer is, this is the time to reevaluate that. If you want to take your business to the next level and grow it and expand it and make more sales, um, this is when you do that. You have to make sure that who are you creating this artwork for, right? Who is it meant for? Who is the person or your ideal customer that will buy from you? And if you don't know this information, what you could do is use your XE stats to see who are who is interested in your products, who's liking your items. And then you can also sign up with Google Analytics. It's free. And the nice thing about Google Analytics is that you can connect your Etsy shop. I actually have a video on that. And you can connect your Etsy shop to Google Analytics. And the nice thing about doing that is that when you connect both of them, now you're able to see location, you're able to see the age, you're able to see interest, you're able to see gender. So you're able to get a little bit more of detailed information about customers who are finding your products, who are clicking, and who are interested in your products. And the nice thing about knowing who your customer is, is that then once you know who your customer is, you could write your your titles for those people, for those co ideal customers. And then if you were to run, let's say, a Facebook ad, you'll have all the demographics that you need to target your ideal customer. So therefore, you're not just wasting money on ads and no one's buying. Now you're only showing your ads to people that are actually truly interested in your products. So therefore, your your return on investment is going to be very good because now you're targeting your ideal customers. But you have to be able to identify who they are because right now, um, from the looks of it, um, you're not doing that at the current moment. Another suggestion that I have is that if no one is looking for your shop by your name, if you have not blown up to the point that people are actually typing in your name, don't use it as to, as a keyword. You're wasting a space. You should use it for an additional keyword that will give you more exposure and more exposure or more people coming to your shop, the more potential of people buying. That's why next to it, it says unknown. And the reason why is because there's not enough data 
coming back to Exe, saying that people are searching you by your name. So therefore, that's why you see here that there's no data reported. So what I would do is just remove any tags that have your store name and use that for regular tags. And then what I would do is make sure that one, you're finding your target audience. Two, you're using long tail keywords because those are going to help you find keywords that are not as competitive or oversaturated, right? So making sure you use long tail keywords. And three, making sure you use keywords that are not too broad. For instance, if you do um, best friend GIF, this is too broad. What I mean by that is that when you type that in on XC, everything and anything comes out. So a uh, picture frames come out or, or poster comes out, a mug comes out, um, mugs, keychains, etc. So what that means is that now you're targeting anybody and everybody. So therefore, this is when you see a lot of people that say, or you hear when people say, well, I get a lot of impressions or I get a lot of views. I'm just not getting the sales. I don't understand why. It's because you're showing your products to the wrong people, to actual people that are not interested in it. So you want to make sure that you are using keywords that are not too broad. You're using keywords that are targeting your audience and using long tail keywords to reduce the fact that you're using keywords that are too oversaturated. Once you have those new keywords and you did the research, what you have to do is go back to your listing and um, even this one is it's a good one. Enjoy today. But um, in the engagement is very low, right? And XE search results, there's none um, coming back. That means that not too many people are searching for just the word enjoy today. So therefore, that one wouldn't be a good tag either. So you got to be careful with tags. You don't want to have them too um too oversaturated, meaning too many people are using, but you also don't want keywords that are too low in competition or no competition because that means that no one is looking for those particular keywords. So therefore, you're not going to drive traffic either, even if you're even if you land on the first page of XE because there's not enough volume of people searching for those keywords. So you kind of have want to have it in the middle. And once you have your new keywords, you will go back. And you would do exactly what you did here. You would put the main keyword in the beginning of the sentence. You would put the main keyword in your meta description like you did, which is perfect. And then you will write like a short um, description of what you're selling because that's what XE new, you know, new way of SEO and how they want you to do it. Because what they're trying to do is create a title that's easy to read for the customer, but doesn't look robotic or too many keywords that are stuff. So having it the way that you did it is perfect, but just changing it up a little bit with the new keywords. And then what I will also do is making sure that your meta description um, should be a little bit longer because the meta description is what the customer sees when they Google you on the search results. So you want to make sure there's a little bit longer. I do see that you have the second paragraph, but it kind of cuts off. So what you want to do is you want to write enough that it doesn't get cut off, but that the person, when they're reading it online, they feel, oh, okay, that's great. Let me click on it. They want to click on it, but you don't want it to cut off at the end. So you want to make sure that it's short and sweet and you write a compelling caption. So therefore, it drives your click, um, your click rate through higher and people are actually clicking to read more or learn more about your product. And then what you want to do is, you want to distribute the additional keywords throughout your listing description. You want to make sure it sounds natural, but you want to include them in there or include as many as you can. And that's an SEO on page factor. Um, and then also like you did, make sure that all your keywords are on the bottom. So you did a really good job with that. Um, now, the third thing I want to talk about is listing description and your listing description should have anything and everything the customer should know about this particular listing. So whether it's the size, the color, the shipping policy, return policy, cancellation policy, even how to order. You have to keep in mind a lot of people, they're pretty new on XC. Um, a lot of people don't even know that, you know, that the listing description has all the information 
And you'll you'll you probably have noticed people will still message you even though you have all the information. But what it helps for those people that actually do read. And you want to build that credibility. So keep in mind the photo is is what made them click. The SEO is how they found you in the first place. And the listing description builds credibility and is what helps you close out the sales. What's going to make you, what's going to have them click and buy from you. So you want to make sure that you meet all three criteria. Um, your listing description is a little bit short. In my opinion, I think it should be a little bit longer. Um, I know that you have your shipping policies. Um, what I would do is include some of this information that you have of your shipping policy because you did an exceptional job explaining it, having whatever pertains to this actual listing, having it here, that way people could understand your shipping policy and there's no confusion. Um, because a lot of people might not go all the way in the bottom to read it because they don't know that they could actually go down there. So having a section for it um, that you briefly explain your shipping policy, briefly explain how to order, briefly explain your return policy if you have any, um, is going to really, really make your, your listing description better. It's going to build that credibility with the customer, and they're going to feel at ease ordering from your shop. So having these little things like that does make a big difference. Um, what I will also do is um, you did a good job of having um, your entire collection and having like a little backlink to that. What I will also do is at the bottom have a backlink to your homepage. A lot of times when people read all the way to the bottom, they'll click back and leave your Etsy store. But if you put a homepage button, they'll stay in your shop longer. So it's just a nice way to keep them longer in your store. Um, so working on that a little bit more, you did a really, really good job with shipping policy. I would just work a little bit more on your listing description and making sure that you add, right? Like I said earlier, your tags, the new tags on your listing description as well. That way you could get additional traffic. And, you know, keep in mind that you did a good job with the category. So you did do that good. Um, and also adding attributes to your listing. So attributes are just the color, the main colors. People shop by colors. Sometimes people shop by if it's like um, something for Christmas or Thanksgiving. So adding those attributes give you additional keyword, additional exposure. So making sure that you're choosing the correct attributes accordingly, right? You're not going to be able to choose a holiday attribute for this unless you find a space for it and it works for that space. So don't just choose anything. Just choose wisely as you do your listings. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is the curation of your shop. It's like the overall look of your shop. And you did an exceptional job with your photo. Um, I could see your face. I think it's very important that you showcase who you are. When people shop on Etsy um, as a handmade um, place, they want to know who they're buying from. It's very personal. It's not like eBay or Amazon. So therefore, having your picture, um, it helps build that credibility. I like the fact that you have updates. My recommendation with updates that I tell people to do is that instead of having both photos, I will have an update of you making the product and then have the photo of the particular item, right? Like the actual listing. That way it shows them dy dynamic. It looks different and you're showcasing the product in two different photos versus just having the same photo. So that will be my suggestion to do. Um, I did see that you did an about me section, which is great. I like the fact that you um, talk about your children. I think that for a lot of people, that's a connection, right? They want to know who they're buying from, why I should buy from your shop. And a lot of times people are emotional buyers. And by reading something, it might connect with them. And they might be like, oh, I just want to buy from her because of X, Y, and Z. So that's really good that you have that in your shop. Um, my suggestion as well, um, you know, I like the fact that you have, um, your tagline, you have your location set, um, you have really good reviews. So I don't necessarily think I have to talk about that because your reviews are really, really good. 
Um, I do believe your products are beautiful as well. Um, I think the only thing um, of your products that I would say is um, your photos need a little pop. I think that over time, we all, you know, could go back in our shops and look at it and say, what can I do different that will make my store like really, really shine or really stand out? So I feel like you do have a cohesive look, I feel, because a lot of shops don't have that. They have like the background here is black and over here is blue and over here is green and over here is like dark brown. So you don't have that. You have a cohesive look. So you're doing a good job. Um, my suggestion would be just looking at it overall, just to give you feedback, right? I'm not saying you have to do these changes. I'm just saying based on what I'm looking at, what I would like to do, or if I was you, is maybe change up these mock-ups. Make them look a little, buy, you know, sometimes you do have to spend a little bit more money on those nicer mock-ups, right? But they make a big difference in the world. And then keeping it structured like you have it now. So making sure that if you buy a particular set of mock-ups that you buy the same style. So all your photos could have the same colors, the same background, the same um, cohesiveness. The reason why is because that's branding 101. If, you're all, if your shop looks the same throughout, um, that builds um, that branding awareness and cohesive looks, and it just looks nicer in the overall scheme of everything. So that would be my suggestion, just giving your shop that little bit of a pop. I do like the fact that you have um, a logo, at least, you know, in your in your shop that's really good. Um, you have an announcement that you just did shortly on August 29th. Um, what I would do is try to make an announcement um, once a month, even if you do the same thing and just update it, that way when people are shopping, they see, oh, she just updated this on November. So she's active in her store. Um, it's just a suggestion. Another nice thing is what, whenever you do an announcement or you um, or you do any updates in your shop, um, whoever favors your shop, they get those alerts of, of changes that you have made. So if you add new products or if you... Uh, have stuff on sale. So just keep that in mind on um, the updates that you do down here. The customers get that. So if you have time to update this on a consistent basis, maybe like once a week, add one photo. You don't have to like spam people. But if you just do one update every week, that's an additional um, 800 and 953 people that will get an alert hey, the store has updated something and that will bring more traffic or just even if it's a fraction of those people that show interest, they'll get that notification. So just keep that in mind. I'm doing that more consistent basis. Um, but overall, I think your shop is really, really good. I think that um, the only thing you might have to work on um, is your SEO first, your photos a little bit more just so you can make them even better looking. Because your product is beautiful. It's just showcasing your photos. I think you could actually step it up a little bit more. And then also um, working on your listing description. Just so you could add more detail, more information. Think out the box. Add more links. Backlinks to different products or different things that they might be interested. Also, if you have, you have this sign, enjoy today. And then you have this one here that's very similar. That says, um, shoes happy. You could actually, at the end of this photo here, have like one photo that has all the different picture frames that kind of go with that frame. You could say, hey, I have matching items or I have um, other prints that kind of go with this particular inspirational print. And then put them there and say links are below in the listing description. You don't never know that like, you might get someone to say, oh, I kind of like those two for my room or... I kind of like the, that combination of different colors. Oh, I want to go ahead and click and buy them. So it's just showcasing your product that way. Um, it's a great way to get more sales and not only for them to buy one print, but maybe buy two or three at the same time. So it's just something that I do in my shop that I've noticed does has helped me increase my sales. So overall, um, Donna, you've done a really exceptional job. I think that with those tweaks, 
um, you could you should be able to see an increase in sales. You should be able to take your shop to the next level, kind of get a better idea of the aesthetic of your shop and and kind of have a better looking shop in a way, right? Even though it's beautiful now, but making it look even better, right? That's that's the key, just improving every every so often, right? We all have to do that in our shops. But I hope that this took this XE critique was helpful. Guys, I'm trying to create a sense of community. So if you have any helpful tips for Donna, please leave them below. Um, guys, also, if you want to uh, get a list um, of my freebies, I have actually a listing checklist that you should grab. It's free. Uh, make sure you click below to sign up for it. I'll be adding additional resources to my Etsy library. So if you want to get freebies and worksheets, um, make sure that you sign up for it below. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure that you like, leave a comment, and subscribe to my channel. Okay, guys, I'll see you on the next video. Thank you for watching.